Apraxia of Speech, Wikipedia Article Audio Apraxia of speech is an acquired oral motor speech disorder affecting an individual's ability to translate conscious speech plans into motor plans, which results in limited and difficult speech ability. By the definition of apraxia, OWS affects volitional movement patterns, however OWS usually also affects automatic speech. Individuals with OWS have difficulty connecting speech messages from the brain to the mouth. OWS is a loss of prior speech ability resulting from a brain injury such as a stroke or progressive illness. Characteristics Diagnosis Developmental verbal dyspraxia, also known as childhood apraxia of speech and developmental apraxia of speech is an inability to utilize motor planning to perform movements necessary for speech during a child's language learning process. Although the causes differ between OWS and DVD, the main characteristics and treatments are similar. Apraxia of speech is a neurogenic communication disorder affecting the motor programming system for speech production. Individuals with OWS demonstrate difficulty in speech production, specifically with sequencing and forming sounds. The leveled model describes the speech production process in the following three consecutive stages, conceptualization, formulation, and articulation. According to the leveled model, apraxia of speech would fall into the articulation region. The individual does not suffer from a language deficiency, but has difficulty in the production of language in an audible manner. Notably, this difficulty is limited to vocal speech, and does not affect sign language production. The individual knows exactly what they want to say, but there is a disruption in the part of the brain that sends the signal to the muscle for the specific movement. Individuals with acquired OWS demonstrate hallmark characteristics of articulation and prosody errors. Coexisting characteristics may include groping and effortful speech production with self-correction, difficulty initiating speech, abnormal stress, intonation, and rhythm errors, and inconsistency with articulation. Words ETAL Describe the following five speech characteristics that an individual with apraxia of speech may exhibit. Apraxia of speech can be diagnosed by a speech-language pathologist through specific exams that measure oral mechanisms of speech. The oral mechanisms exam involves tasks such as pursing lips, blowing, licking lips, elevating the tongue, and also involves an examination of the mouth. A complete exam also involves observation of the patient eating and talking. SLPs do not agree on a specific set of characteristics that make up the apraxia of speech diagnosis, so any of the characteristics from the section above could be used to form a diagnosis. Patients may be asked to perform other daily tasks such as reading, writing, and conversing with others. In situations involving brain damage, an MRI brain scan also helps identify damaged areas of the brain. A differential diagnosis must be used in order to rule out other similar or alternative disorders. Although disorders such as expressive aphasia, conduction aphasia, and dysarthria involve similar symptoms as apraxia of speech, the disorders must be distinguished in order to correctly treat the patients. While OWS involves the motor planning or processing stage of speech, aphasic disorders can involve other language processes. Possible Comorbid Aphasias According to Ziegler ETAL, this difficulty in diagnosis derives from the unknown causes and function of the disorder making it hard to set definite parameters for OWS identification. Specifically, 
he explains that oral facial apraxia, dysarthria, and aphasic phonological impairment are the three distinctly different disorders that cause individuals to display symptoms that are often similar to those of someone with OUS, and that these close relatives must be correctly ruled out by a speech-language pathologist before OUS can be given as a diagnosis. In this way, OUS is a diagnosis of exclusion and is generally recognized when all other similar speech sound production disorders are eliminated. OWS and expressive aphasia are commonly mistaken as the same disorder mainly because they often occur together in patients. Although both disorders present with symptoms such as a difficulty producing sounds due to damage in the language parts of the brain, they are not the same. The main difference between these disorders lies in the ability to comprehend spoken language. Patients with apraxia are able to fully comprehend speech, while patients with aphasia are not always fully able to comprehend others' speech. Causes Conduction aphasia is another speech disorder that is similar to, but not the same as, apraxia of speech. Although patients who suffer from conduction aphasia have full comprehension of speech, as do our sufferers, there are differences between the two disorders. Patients with conduction aphasia are typically able to speak fluently, but they do not have the ability to repeat what they hear. Similarly, dysarthria, another motor speech disorder, is characterized by difficulty articulating sounds. The difficulty in articulation does not occur due in planning the motor movement, as happens with OUS. Instead, dysarthria is caused by inability in or weakness of the muscles in the mouth, face, and respiratory system. Apraxia of speech can be caused by impairment to parts of the brain that control muscle movement and speech. However, identifying a particular region of the brain in which OWS always occurs has been controversial. Various patients with damage to left subcortical structures, regions of the insula, and Broca's area have been diagnosed with OWS. Most commonly it is triggered by vascular lesions, but OWS can also arise due to tumors and trauma. Acute Apraxia of Speech Stroke-associated OUS is the most common form of acquired OUS, making up about 60% of all reported acquired OUS cases. This is one of the several possible disorders that can result from a stroke, but only about 11% of stroke cases involve this disorder. Brain damage to the neural connections, and especially the neural synapses, during the stroke can lead to acquired OUS. Most cases of stroke-associated OUS are minor, but in the most severe cases, all linguistic motor function can be lost and must be relearned. Since most with this form of OUS are at least 50 years old, few fully recover to their previous level of ability to produce speech. Progressive Apraxia of Speech other disorders and injuries of the brain that can lead to OUS include dementia, progressive neurological disorders, and traumatic brain injury. Management Recent research has established the existence of primary progressive apraxia of speech caused by neuroanatomic motor atrophy. For a long time, this disorder was not distinguished from other motor speech disorders such as dysarthria and in particular primary progressive aphasia. Many studies have been done trying to identify areas in the brain in which this particular disorder occurs or at least to show that it occurs in different areas of the brain than other disorders. One study observed 37 patients with neurodegenerative speech disorders to determine whether or not it is distinguishable from other disorders, and if so where in the brain it can be found. Using speech and language, neurological, neuropsychological and neuroimaging testing, 
the researchers came to the conclusion that PA does exist and that it correlates to superior lateral premotor and supplementary motor atrophy. However, because PA is such a rare and recently discovered disorder, many studies do not have enough subjects to observe to make data entirely conclusive. In cases of acute OUS, spontaneous recovery may occur, in which previous speech abilities reappear on their own. All other cases of acquired OUS require a form of therapy, however the therapy varies with the individual needs of the patient. Typically, treatment involves one-on-one -on -one therapy with a speech-language pathologist. For severe forms of OUS, Therapy may involve multiple sessions per week, which is reduced with speech improvement. Another main theme in OWS treatment is the use of repetition in order to achieve a large amount of target utterances, or desired speech usages. History and Terminology There are various treatment techniques for OWS. One technique, called the linguistic approach utilizes the rules for sounds and sequences. This approach focuses on the placement of the mouth in forming speech sounds. Another type of treatment is the motor programming approach, in which the motor movements necessary for speech are practiced. This technique utilizes a great amount of repetition in order to practice the sequences and transitions that are necessary in between production of sounds. Research about the treatment of apraxia has revealed four main categories, articulatory kinematic, rate-slash-rhythm control, intersystemic facilitation-slash-reorganization treatments, and alternative-slash-augmentative communication. One specific treatment method is referred to as PROMPT. This acronym stands for Prompts for Restructuring Oral Muscular Phonetic Targets, and takes a hands-on multidimensional approach at treating speech production disorders. Prompt therapists integrate physical sensory, cognitive linguistic, and social-emotional aspects of motor performance. The main focus is developing language interaction through this tactile kinetic approach by using touch cues to facilitate the articulatory movements associated with individual phonemes, and eventually words. One study describes the use of electropalatography to treat a patient with severe acquired apraxia of speech. EPG is a computer-based tool for assessment and treatment of speech motor issues. The program allows patients to see the placement of articulators during speech production thus aiding them in attempting to correct errors. Originally after two years of speech therapy, the patient exhibited speech motor and production problems including problems with phonation, articulation, and resonance. This study showed that EPG therapy gave the patient valuable visual feedback to clarify speech movements that had been difficult for the patient to complete when given only auditory feedback. While many studies are still exploring the various treatment methods, a few suggestions from ASHA for treating apraxia patients include the integration of objective treatment evidence, theoretical rationale, clinical knowledge and experience, and the needs and goals of the patient. Current Research The term apraxia was first defined by Hugo Carl Lippmann in 1908 as the inability to perform voluntary acts despite preserved muscle strength. In 1969, Frederick L. Darley coined the term apraxia of speech, replacing Lippmann's original term apraxia of the glossolabiopharyngeal structures. Paul Broca had also identified this speech disorder in 1861, which he referred to as aphemia, a disorder involving difficulty of articulation despite having intact language skills and muscular function. The disorder is currently referred to as apraxia of speech, but was also formerly termed verbal dyspraxia. The term apraxia comes from the Greek root praxis, 
meaning the performance of action or skilled movement. Adding the prefix a, meaning absence, or dis, meaning abnormal or difficult, to the root praxis, both function to imply speech difficulties related to movement. Articulatory kinematic treatments almost always require verbal production in order to bring about improvement of speech. One common technique for this is modeling or repetition in order to establish the desired speech behavior. Articulatory kinematic treatments are based on the importance of patients to improve spatial and temporal aspects of speech production. Rate and rhythm control treatments exist to improve errors in patients' timing of speech, a common characteristic of apraxia. These techniques often include an external source of control like metronomic pacing, for example, in repeated speech productions, intersystemic reorganization slash facilitation techniques often involve physical body or limb gestural approaches to improve speech. Gestures are usually combined with verbalization. It is thought that limb gestures may improve the organization of speech production. Finally, alternative and augmentative communication approaches to treatment of apraxia are highly individualized for each patient. However, they often involve a comprehensive communication system that may include speech, a communication book aid, a spelling system, a drawing system, a gestural system, technologies, and informed speech partners. Many researchers are investigating the characteristics of apraxia of speech and the most effective treatment methods. Below are a couple of the recent findings. Sound production treatment Articulatory kinematic treatments have the strongest evidence of their use in treating acquired apraxia of speech. These treatments use the facilitation of movement, positioning, timing, and articulators to improve speech production. Sound production treatment is an articulatory kinematic treatment that has received more research than many other methods. It combines modeling, repetition, minimal pair contrast, integral stimulation, articulatory placement cueing, and verbal feedback. It was developed to improve the articulation of targeted sounds in the mid-1990s. SPT shows consistent improvement of trained sounds in trained and untrained words. The best results occur with 8 to 10 exemplars of the targeted sound to promote generalization to untrained exemplars of trained sounds. In addition, maintenance effects are the strongest with 1-2 months post-treatment with sounds that reached high accuracy during treatment. Therefore, the termination of treatment should not be determined by performance criteria, and not by the number of sessions the client completes in order to have the greatest long-term effects. While there are many parts of SPT that should receive further investigation, it can be expected that it will improve the production of targeted sounds for speakers with apraxia of speech. Repeated practice and rate-slash-rhythm control treatments Julie Wamba's research focuses on clinically applicable treatments for acquired apraxia of speech. She recently published an article examining the effects of repeated practice and rate-slash-rhythm control on sound production accuracy. Wamba and colleagues studied the effects of such treatment for 10 individuals with acquired apraxia of speech. The results indicate that repeated practice treatment results in significant improvements in articulation for most clients. In addition, Rate-slash-rhythm control helps some clients, but not others. Thus, incorporating repeated practice treatment into therapy would likely help individuals with AUSE.